Minister Singh, Dr. Birol, Mr. Chavla, Mr. Mathur, Namroz, Divya. Friends, it's a real pleasure to be here. And I must say it's a, it's a real honor to have the opportunity of getting to the podium first after that extremely insightful uh, talk by Dr. Birol. Thank you, sir. That was really, really very interesting. I think it gave us a very good overview of all the things that are happening in the energy markets globally, and particularly how they pertain to India, the progress that India has made over the many years, and the opportunities for the country as well. Uh, let me comment on a few of the, of the points that Dr. Birol uh, had talked about. Uh, my one overarching comment is, with regard to some of the projections, is that while there are projections out to 2040 in a number of cases, just given the experience of the past and how quickly technology has been changing and transforming our beliefs about the future, I would not be very surprised if, in fact, the future does turn out to be somewhat different from what has been forecast at this point in time, simply because I think the changes that will continue to happen in the sector will continue to confound us, continue to surprise us, and continue to amaze us, and will continue to offer opportunities in various new areas of energy that we cannot at this point even anticipate. But my suspicion is that in the next 10 to 20 years, the future will turn out to be quite different from the way we can at best envision it at this point in time. And I think just a simple example in that respect is what has in fact happened to renewable energy prices over the last 12 to 18 months, where they've actually come down much, much sharper than anybody had anticipated in the past. And that, in fact, is now informing our decisions about how the future might unfold differently from what we might have conceived it to be uh, just a little while ago. I think the second very interesting point that Dr. Birol mentioned uh, was about the amount of growth that we are likely to see in India. And he mentioned that we might, by the year 2040, add another Europe to our, to our overall energy production basket. And the interesting fact is, when you look at, the, at these numbers, that even at that level, the production that we would have of, the, of, of total energy would really put, put us at about, on a per capita basis, of about 2,500 kilowatt hours per year, which, as Minister Singh had mentioned in his remarks, the global average today is about 3,900 kilowatt hours. So even after adding a Europe in generation terms by 2040, we will actually still be almost 40 to 50% below the global average in terms of, of electricity consumption. And to me, that is, in fact, a very interesting fact about India, that despite the immense opportunity and growth that exists, and that will surely happen, and will surely take place over the next 20, 10 to 20 years, whatever we end up doing as a country will still be short of what we actually need to do just to provide even the global average for our, global, for our citizens. And if you think about it, at 3,900, and this is a very mathematical thing, the average is actually pulled down because India is 20% of, by that time of the global population. Without India, the rest of the world is actually going to be having an average even higher. And so the delta between India and the rest of the world is still going to be quite sizable. And so the reality is that we operate in a country, we are in a country, we do business, some of us, in the country, we make policy in a country which has tremendous, tremendous opportunity. And I think that is something that we all have to be really thankful for because it does provide us many avenues to grow our businesses, to create new things, and to really build an India that can actually leapfrog in some ways with the best of new technologies that are available right now. But the interesting thing is that while India does offer this fantastic opportunity, it's also a really a paradox. And the reason India is a paradox is because of a number of challenges of doing business in India. So I'll talk a little bit about what those challenges are that we face to realize the dreams that we have, to realize the targets that Minister Singh mentioned in his address, where he talked so eloquently about 
the growth of renewable energy, and about the fact that we should leave fossil fuel buried in the ground, and that, in fact, should be our attempt going forward. And I think, sir, that is an extremely, extremely uh, noble idea, and, uh, and I think something that we should really try to aspire to. In terms of the specific issues of the challenges that we have to deal with in trying to make sure that we are able to realize uh, the challenges that we have of creating all of this extra capacity, I think the first one that I would list out, and the first one, which is also perhaps the most important one, and also perhaps the most controversial one, really, and which Dr. Birol alluded to in his, in his last page of his presentation, is the issue of government policy. Ultimately, I think at this stage of our evolution, the kind of government policies that we have will determine whether we are actually able to exceed the targets that we are setting for ourselves, or whether we actually fall short of them. And in that respect, having operated in India in the renewable sector for the last eight years, I would say that, and I treat very carefully here, <laughs> given the, given the uh, presence of, uh, of uh, our uh, policymakers, is that policy has very often uh, not been as conducive as it could have been for faster growth in the sector. And I think even today, just given the federal polity that we have, there is still continues to be a fair delta in terms of policy making between what the center is trying to achieve and what some of the states are trying to work towards. And I think that does lead to uh, some degree of confusion in the sector. It does lead to some issues which cannot be bridged in time and therefore does hold back growth as it might have uh, otherwise happened. I think one way to bridge that gap perhaps is to have more interaction between uh, people in the policy making side and people in the business side who actually have to do the hard work and make the investments. I think some sort of formal interaction in that regard would actually be very useful. The second point in terms of the challenges which again Dr. Birol alluded to, um, and he said it very, very, very well when he said that the most important thing really are investments, investments, investments. How do we attract investments into the economy, into the sector, to be able to fund all this growth that we need to really see happening? And if you look at the targets of 175 gigawatts, out of which perhaps only about 75 more has to be executed, but even looking beyond that at the targets of 2030 of four to 500 gigawatts, we will require almost $400 billion of extra capital and both debt and equity capital. Now, equity capital will not come in unless you have stability of outlook, which the government certainly is providing at this point in time. But the second thing that you require is a certain kind of return to be made, which unfortunately is not happening at this point in time. And that is something that I think we'll have to really think about. And I think when you look at some of the risks in the system, uh, I can see with my experience of talking to international investors that international investors are becoming cautious. And it's not necessarily to do with India. It is to do with issues around what is happening in geopolitics around the world. And it is happening with respect to interest rates, generally speaking, going up. But all of that is feeding into the issue of less interest from capital providers to come into sectors uh, where we need them to come into. So I think really in incentivizing capital to come in, I think, is another very important aspect. The third point that I would mention uh, in the area of challenges is the issue of the distribution sector, which we all know really is the weak point in India's entire power value chain. And unless that area is addressed, we will continue to have the problems of that part of the value chain spreading into other parts of the value chain. And when you look at the, the receivables or the, or the payments that discoms right now owe to private sector companies, it's of the order of billions of dollars. And that is something that just cannot continue because you cannot have a situation where when bank funding to discoms is drying up, that they get their financing from the private sector because that just increases the burden on the private sector companies in the, in the space. So I think that is something that really does need to be addressed with, with great urgency, because that ultimately is the linchpin of growth in the entire sector. And if that fundamental building block is not addressed, then all of the edifice that we need to build on top of that 
will be at risk. The other thing I think I would like to say uh, in, um, in conclusion is that grid management is another very important factor. And uh, we all know that storage, and both Minister Singh and Dr. Birol talked about that, uh, storage is an important opportunity. Uh, it's really very heartening to see that the government is talking about introducing storage-based uh, projects now going forward in the bids that happen. I think that is very, very critical in making sure that we have stability to absorb all of this new renewable energy that is going to be coming into the grid without having instability in the system. But we also, at the same time, need to really make our grid management a lot more sophisticated in terms of development of ancillary markets, in terms of uh, the ability to manage uh, the injection of a lot of solar, for example, in the middle of the day, or wind when the high wind season happens around the monsoons, and demand backs off at the same time. So there are quite a few grid management issues that we really have to look at. Because again, um, as Minister Singh said, we have the largest uh, grid in the world, but it has to really be managed in a much more sophisticated way to really become uh, the basis where we can actually inject so much more renewables into the system. I'll stop there, um, but uh, the last point I would like to make, uh, which Dr. Birol again did touch upon, is the issue of climate change. Today, just to give you a very, very simple number, the accepted number that we can inject into the atmosphere of carbon, in terms of carbon, uh, before we cross two degrees centigrade uh, temperature increase, uh, is about 800 gigatons. Today, we're already at 550 gigatons. And we are injecting almost 10 gigatons of carbon every year into the atmosphere, which means that we have exactly 25 years after which we cross this, the total budget that we have of 800 gigatons. India today does about a gigaton every year. Now, if we are to grow, and we need to grow, and if we grow to three times or four times in terms of energy consumption, and this one gigaton grows to two or three times, then in fact, we'll obviously get to this, uh, exceed the, the two degrees centigrade number faster. So I think the point really being just to highlight that the, that the decisions that India makes now uh, on our energy policies are gonna be really, really fundamental in, in, in determining whether we in fact exceed uh, the climate change targets or whether we in fact stay within those numbers. And so I'm delighted that we have a government which is extremely sensitive to this topic. And I think that the, the comments that Minister Singh made about uh, keeping fossil fuels where they are, I think it's extremely heartening to hear. And I, I do believe that we have the ability of meeting the targets that we have and in doing so in a sustainable and environmentally friendly manner. Thank you.